Welcome back friends, today I'm gonna try to install one of those cheap diesel heaters in the tiny house boat. Now this one here has been gifted to me by the previous owner of our blue van. Um, it was meant as part of a camper conversion, he just never got around it and he had no use for it otherwise, so he gave it to us. Um, Carson, if you're watching this, thanks again. Now those units are often referred to as Chinese diesel heaters and they're fairly cheap. This is a 5 kilowatt unit and they go for around $200 Canadian on Amazon. Um, I never have worked with one of those, I never installed one. So let's go ahead and take a look at this package and see what's in there. My god, those are a lot of parts, a little bit overwhelming to be honest. And if you try to take a look at this manual here, you will be even further confused because whoever produced this thing did not feel like paying someone to translate a proper manual. But to be fair, what can you expect for $200, right? So I'm going to ignore this completely for now and just take a look online and see what I can find there. All right, so after spending a couple hours online, I realized this is actually not as complicated as I thought. Basically, we are trying to create heat through combustion, and there are always three things that are needed for combustion. You need fuel, in this case it is diesel, you need oxygen, simply provided by air, and we need heat, which will come off the glow plug. Now those are the main ingredients for combustion, and as byproduct, we have exhaust fumes and the desired heat. Now that's already it, those are the basics, and to make all of this work properly, we have in addition a control unit, which monitors the function of the fuel pump, the fan, and the glow plug. Understanding this now, I think we can start to assemble. Now in the last episode, I built this little countertop here, and what you couldn't see in that video is that behind those water jugs is actually still quite some space available. So that's where I would like to install the heater. To provide some sort of platform to, for the heater to sit on, I started by installing two brackets, one left, one right, and both of those brackets have a little cutout section to accept a piece of plywood. Once I drop that in there, it will stay securely in place. So what that means is in the a, in a future, if I ever have to work on the heater, I just can take the whole assembly out without unbolting anything. All right, now let's put it together. I did a quick test setup in the garage here, I just didn't want to place all the hoses and cables just to figure out the unit is not working. And because I used the full length of the provided fuel line here, it took over 10 minutes to prime the pump and get all the air bubbles out. But after that it worked like a charm and I finally committed to the full installation. I started with the fuel tank and as you can see here, I installed it at the stern of the boat so this way I don't have to mess around with diesel in the inside. I had to drill a small hole for the fuel line under what is going to be the seat in the future and I drilled the hole in an angle to avoid any pinch points. I wasn't even working on this though for half an hour when I realized that my basic sense for aesthetics is going to lengthen this job a bit.
I am extremely frustrated right now. A couple of weeks ago, I ordered a through hull fitting for the exhaust pipe. I'm going to put up a picture here somewhere. Um, it was supposed to arrive a week ago. It didn't. I'm in contact with customer service since days and absolute potatoes there. Um, today, they finally figured out that the package got lost in transit. I don't know why this keeps happening to me, but that's how it is. Long story short, it's Thursday night right now, and I really want to put out a video for this week, and I don't want to let you guys wait another week. So I decided to just make my own fitting. I went through my scrap steel pile and I couldn't find for the life of me a piece of pipe that would fit. So I found this piece of square steel here and by grinding down one end here, I was able to make it somewhat fit. Now basically I'm going to turn a round pipe into a square one. And then I'm going to use that little plate here to weld that chunk of square steel on it. That way I just have less heat transfer to the hull. And the inner pipe is going to be welded in an angle, why I'm going to explain later, but it's basically going to point downwards a little bit. And then I'm going to have to weld on this end plate, just so I have something to screw onto the hull. I'm not going to film all the welding now, but I will show you the end result, so let's get it done. Alright, this is how it looked like after the welding and grinding. In this picture you can see how the inner pipe is angled down. Since this was made from mild steel, I had to paint it so it doesn't rust. I used Rust-Oleum high heat spray paint and I let it dry overnight and then cured the paint in the oven the next morning. It actually takes three rounds of 30 minutes each and each time you have to increase the temperature up to 300 degrees Celsius. It is hard to see in a picture, but I actually had a really snug fit around the exhaust pipe, which is obviously super important since you don't want any fumes on the inside. Then I used an oscillating multi-tool to cut out an opening. This was quite hard on the blade since I'm cutting through a layer of fiberglass here, but I got it done. I cut out in one inch space all the way around the fitting and then I used this ceramic fiber insulation to fill the gap. Now this material can withstand 1450 degrees Celsius. The only thing that was left now is to grab the whole heater assembly and hook up all the hoses and cables. I think we are ready for a test. Alright, so I primed the pump already and everything is ready to go. Let's see what the temperature says here. It's chilly 8 degrees, 9. Let's double check and see what the kitties are telling me. The kitties are telling me also between 8 and 9, so that's perfect. Um, I'm gonna let this run now for 15 minutes and see what happens. Um, I don't want to let it run longer. We are after all still in the garage. I opened the garage door, but I don't want to collect exhaust fumes in the garage. So yeah, let's give it a go. Alright, let's put it right away in the highest heat setting. There are six settings. I just could hear the fan kicking in. And there goes the pump. All right, well, let's see what happens in 15 minutes. I actually let it run for 20 minutes and the temperature increased by over 10 degrees, which is very impressive considering that I don't even have windows installed and all the openings are just hung up with plastic top. To be honest with you, the heater is a bit noisy for my taste. But other than that, I'm very happy with it. It puts out a ton of heat pretty much in a matter of a minute. So this is going to be a really nice backup in case I don't want to use the wood stove back here. So the overall installation was pretty easy and there are a ton of videos and tips and tricks online. So the internet is going to be your best friend in that regard. That being said though, let me share five tips with you guys that I think are really helpful. Tip one. Make sure you install your fuel pump in the right angle. An incorrect angle can create all kinds of problems with the internal check valve and you also might get air stuck in there. Now the best position for your pump is between 15 and 35 degrees with the flow direction going upwards. Never let the pump point downwards and don't even install it horizontally. If you really have to, an angle between 35 degrees and 90 degrees is also acceptable. Tip 2. It is a good idea to replace those soft fuel lines that usually come with those kits with a hard nylon line. I probably will upgrade this in the future. Don't get me wrong, those soft fuel lines, they do work. It's just that nylon works better, especially in the long run. The nylon lines are not as fragile, they don't kink as easily, and they don't degrade uh, over time like this one does. 
Also, they are less prone to trap air bubbles. There are a couple more reasons, but other people have made already really good videos about this, so I'm just gonna put a link to one of them in the video description. Tip 3. You also need to pay attention on how you install your exhaust pipe. Your exhaust pipe always should point downwards. Why? Well, you could have some condensation build up in there and that condensation can restrict the flow of your exhaust fumes and it could even freeze up if it's cold enough. So if it's pointing downwards, it always will drain naturally. If you happen to install one of those mufflers for noise reduction, you might have noticed this little hole here on the side. That's there for the exact same reason, to drain condensation. So if you install a muffler, make sure that little hole is pointing down as well. Now those heaters are meant for motorhomes, campers, trucks, cars, and all of them point down anyways because you route the exhaust to the floor. Well, that's a different story with a boat, obviously. You don't want to punch a hole to the bottom of your hull. So you will end up to installing your heater in a much higher position to allow for that angle. It's just something to keep in mind when you install one of those diesel heaters in a boat. Tip four. Make sure you don't install your fuel filter backwards like I did. I thought the little basket in there is meant to catch all the settlements, but they are designed for the fuel to go around it. Otherwise that little basket would fill up rather quickly and plug it up. So that is something I will have to fix in the future when I replace the fuel lens. Tip 5. One thing that almost no one talks about is how you should pick the right size of heater for your project. Now those units come in all kinds of sizes, most commonly in 3, 5 and 8 kilowatt. And I mentioned earlier the heater in this video here is 5 kilowatt. That does not translate to 5000 BTU, it's actually much higher, it's around 17000 BTU. So what happens is that people pick way too big of a heater and then they end up running it on the lowest setting to match their needs. Now that in the long run will cause a lot of carbon buildup and your unit will fail prematurely. So I definitely recommend you do your homework, do the math and pick the right size. All right, that pretty much wraps it up for this time. If you happen to be new here, please consider subscribing. Those videos are a ton of work and I really could use the support. Either way, thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next one.